Question one. Write the missing number to make this division correct. We've got 75 divided by something equals 7.5. A lot of you will probably know straight away that the answer is 10. But let's have a little closer look as to why it is 10. Well, if we write the number 75 down and put the column headings on, 5 is in the units column, 7 is in the tens column. And then obviously after units you've got your decimal point then tenths, then hundredths, then thousandths. And then after tens going this way, we'd have hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions. So we're trying to get from 75, which is this in the question here, to 7.5. So if you're going from 75 to 7.5, then the digits have moved backwards so 7.5 will be seven units and five tenths and obviously your decimal point is there let's just put the decimal point into 75 like that so each of the digits has moved one place backwards so the five has gone from the units column into the tenths column that's one place backwards and the seven has also gone from the tens column into the units column so that's one place backwards if the digits have moved one place backwards, then that means you must have divided by 10. If the digits move two places backwards, then that means you must have divided by 100. And if the digits move three places back, that means you must have divided by 1000. So for example, if we wanted to divide, if this question actually said 75 divided by 100 instead, then we'd need to move the digits back an extra place. So because they've already moved one place back to get to 7.5, they'd move an extra place back. The 7 would go into the tenths column, the 5 would go into the hundredths column, and we'd have to fill in the units column with a 0, so it'd be 0 0.75. That would be the answer to 75 divided by 100. If we had 75 divided by 1,000, the digits would move an extra place back. So the 7 would go into this column, the 5 would go into the thousandths column, and obviously we'd have a decimal point there. Now you can't just leave these empty gaps here and here, so you'd put a 0 in there to fill the empty gap, and a 0 in there to fill that empty gap. So if you are dividing by 10, 100, or 1,000, you move all the digits backwards. The number of places you move backwards depend on how many zeros there is. So 10, divide by 10 would be one place back, divide by 100 would be two places back, divide by 1000 would be three places back. But that's if you're dividing. What about if you're multiplying? Well, if you're dividing, you move the digits backwards. If you're multiplying, you move the digits the opposite way, so forwards. So for example, if you're timesing by 10, you move the digits one place forwards. One place forwards. If you times it by 100, it's two places forwards. And if you times it by 1,000, well, 1,000's got three zeros on it, so that's three places forwards. And it would look something like this in this example. So 75 times 10, the 7 would move one place forward into the hundreds column, the 5 would move one place forward into the tens column, then obviously we've got our decimal point, the decimal point doesn't move, so this big gap here we'd have to fill in with a 0. If we were times in 75 by 100, we'd need to move an extra place forwards, so the 7 would be in the thousands column, the 5 would be in the hundreds, the 0 would be here, and then we need another zero to fill in the gap there. 75 times 1,000, same sort of thing again. The 7 would move into the tens of thousands column. The 5 would move into the thousands column. Because we've moved everything three places forwards now. So because we've moved this 75 three places forwards, there's now three gaps. So all three gaps would have to be filled in with zeros.